it was really a betrayal by someone who had I had considered a friend for about 20 years. LA talent manager Zach Tan had been a Star Wars collector, buying up and selling Star Wars items for years. During those years, Zach has built up a network of trust among collectors who would often sell or trade rare items or work with the collectors to find that rare piece they were looking for. On February 3rd, 2017, Zach got a simple text message that came from one of those trusted friends. I have a biggie. Are you sitting down? The text was from Carl Cunningham, a Georgia native and longtime collector. After years of collecting, Carl was starting to sell off some of his prized possessions and wanted to give Zach the first look at what he had to sell. The next text to come up would show something Zach could not believe. He sat down, looked at the photo again. Was he seeing it right? Was he really being offered the holy grail of Star Wars collecting? A unreleased 1979 Boba Fett prototype with rocket firing missile. At this time, the last known prototype has sold for around $20,000. Not only was this a rare figure, it was real. There have been many fakes over the years, but this figure was graded by the CIB, and without a doubt, this one was real. Carl and Zack made a deal. Zack started to pull together the money. The undisclosed amount was more than Zack was accustomed to spending on Star Wars, but he got half of the money together. Now all Zack had to do was wait. As Carl was out of town and wouldn't return back home, where he stored the Boba Fett for a couple more days. It would be a hard, long wait, but Zach felt it was worth it. Philip Wise, the founder of one of the most popular websites for Star Wars collectors called Rebel Scum. The name was taken from a small but very rememberable line for Return of the Jedi. You Rebel Scum. The website started up in 1996 as Philip's Star Wars pictures, toys, and thoughts. Since then, the site has grown to a staff of over 10, and its meshes board area has become the hangout for collectors of the old, new, or the strange. Phil was also a serious collector of Star Wars toys himself, and for years, he would often talk with other Star Wars collectors and help new collectors learn more about the hobby on the Rebel Scum message board. Philip had always been there to help out and to share his love for Star Wars with anyone. On February 12, 2017, Philip would post a message asking for help. Philip had discovered that his graded prototype rocket firing Boba Fett was missing from his workshop museum. This wasn't just misplaced, it was without a doubt stolen. Philip wanted anyone that saw a rocket firing Boba Fett for sale to let him know, as it was a good chance it was his. After all, there were not many out there. A J slot prototype is said to be around 25 figures. The post got over 26,000 views and quickly became the talk of the Star Wars community. It didn't take long for Zach Tan's phone to start going off again. This time it was friends telling him about the stolen graded Boba Fett. He felt like he'd been punched in the stomach. Could this have been the one that his longtime friend was trying to sell off? Or maybe it was just some kind of strange coincidence. From Kenner's Star Wars collection comes the Stormtrooper, the Sand People, and all 20 action figures, including new Hammerhead, Snaggletooth, and more, each sold separately. And now, Boba Fett. What was Zack to do? He had already given huge amount of money for the figure. Would he have to return it to Philip? Lose all that money and not get anything? And he didn't even have the figure. What if it didn't even show up at all? But Zack knew what he had to do. He sent Philip an email and then quickly received a phone call. Zack told Philip about the story of the Boba Fett he had just bought, but he left the seller's name out. After all, he still wasn't sure this was the one being sold, and he didn't want to put the seller's name out there if he was innocent. Philip told Zack they had a list of suspects that he had given to a local police. Zack asked if anyone on that list was from Georgia, and Philip told him there was one person, Carl Cunningham. Zack felt sick to his stomach. He knew then Carl was trying to sell him the stolen Boba Fett. Carl Cunningham wasn't just some stranger out to make a quick dollar off someone else's hard work. Carl was like them, a Star Wars collector. He had traded and made deals with them all before. He was a regular at San Diego Comic Con, Dragon Con, and Star Wars Celebration. He worked with websites like Ain't It Cool News and Cinema Watch. He even did volunteer work at Rancho Obi-Wan. And he was often a guest at Philip Wise's home. Once the shock of the Boba Fett had wore off some, it hit Zack that he had been buying from Carl for the last few years. Could it all have been stolen goods? Zack quickly made a list of items he remembered buying from Carl and sent it to Philip along with the items Carl was selling. Philip looked over the list and a lot of it matched what he was missing from his collection. But Carl was trying to sell a large volume of items. He had to be stealing from someone else. Someone with a large collection and rare items. The list of items Carl was selling 
told Philip that it is most likely come from one source, and a source with such a big collection, he wouldn't notice things missing from time to time. There was only one person it could be, so Philip picked up the phone to break the news to former Lucasfilm president of fan relations, the owner of Rancho Obi-Wan, the man that the Guinness Book of World Records says has the biggest Star Wars collection in the world, Stephen Sansweet. After hearing the news, Stephen and his team took inventory at Ranch Obi-Wan, and a lot of the items that Carl had sold or was trying to sell off were missing from the museum. As news got back to Zack, he started to think back to dealing with Carl and wonder why he never noticed anything earlier. Carl was selling items lower than the asking price and tell him that was all he had to sell, but then would call him back a few weeks later with more rare items to sell. And it was something about the Boba Fett that Carl said that was very odd that was starting to make sense. Carl made it clear to Zack that he wasn't to tell anyone who sold him the Boba Fett prototype. He said other friends would be angry that he didn't offer it to them first, but now Zack could see the real reason. Although he had already spent a lot of money on the Boba Fett, Zack knew what he had to do. He would meet with Carl, get the Boba Fett, and return it back to Philip while doing a little detective work. On February 15, 2013, four days after Philip posted about his stolen Boba Fett, Carl sent Zack a text. Carl said there had been some complications, and he was now nervous about selling the prototype Boba Fett, and again telling Zack to keep the sale between them. He said that with Philip posting about his stolen Boba Fett, he was worried that people would try to think he was selling the one that was taken from Philip. Carl admitted that he did know Philip, and that the Boba Fett did come from him, but it wasn't the one posted that was stolen. According to Carl, Philip had two rocket firing Boba Fett figures, and he sold one to Carl with a promise that Carl would sell it back to him if he ever sold it. So Zack told Carl he wanted to pull out of the deal and that he should call Philip and sell it to him as promised. The two talked a little longer, and Carl told him that he was shocked that Phyllis Boba Fett could have been stolen, that it was locked behind glass and watched by video surveillance. To Zack, Carl knowing that the figure was locked away and had a camera on it, removed any doubt he had, which was very little at the time, that Carl was the one that stole the Boba Fett. Zack received part of his money back, and Philip called Carl, telling him that he and others knew that Carl took the Boba Fett. In that phone call, Carl admitted what he had done, and returned to Philip the Boba Fett, and then reached out to Stephen Sansweet, and confessed that he was the one that took the items from Rancho Obi-Wan when he was there doing volunteer work three times. Welcome to the expansion. Steven Sansweet was angry and felt betrayed. After all, Carl was what Steven thought was a trusted friend that shared the same passion of Star Wars merchandise as he did. Steven contacted the local police who issued a warrant for Carl's arrest. Well, it, it was really a betrayal by someone who had I had considered a friend for about 20 years and so he knew the way we worked and we gave him as we have given other people in the past but unfortunately no longer free reign of the museum and um, over the course of a year, at four different occasions, he stole about $200,000 worth of retail value uh, items. On March 24, 2017, Carl surrendered to the police and was charged with felony grand theft. He pled not guilty, posted a $25,000 bail, and would later change his plea to guilty. The whole thing was a buzz around the collector's world, but really didn't travel far from there until June 5th when Stephen posted on the museum's website the details of losing more than 100 items and named Carl as the thief. The news was then tweeted out by Chewbacca himself, Peter Mayhew, and then retweeted by Mark Hamill. And that started a snowball where others would tweet the story out and press started doing articles about the theft. Collectors groups, message boards, everyone was having their say, even swapping around memes of Carl. Taking items was one thing that was bad enough. But many were shocked that he thought he could get away with taking something so rare like the rocket firing Boba Fett from a well-known collector and then trying to sell it off to other well-known collectors. And then the fans started taking things a little too far, sending Carl and his family death threats, calling the place where Carl worked until they got him fired. Some fans even tracked down his young children and sent them harassing messages. It was one thing for someone to steal your beloved items, but for it to turn out to be a fellow collector, and a friend you had for years made it so much worse. Even to those that wasn't one of his victims, they felt betrayed and hurt. I just want to make up for it. I have no excuses. Everything I did was my fault. Carl said to the judge on November the 30th, 2017. He had arrived to the court to be sentenced. 
alone, no friend, no family, just Carl. Carl stole from me under the cover of friendship. Stephen Sansweep will say at the hearing, adding, In my 72 years, in my private and professional life, I had never felt such a sense of betrayal. Carl was sentenced to 12 months and two years probation, and he was also ordered to pay Stephen over $185,000 and pay back the rest of the money they owed to Zach. However, he would never spend time behind bars. Two weeks before he was to serve his time, he was placed into the Detention Alternative Program, a program for nonviolent offenders who had expressed remorse. He had to wear an anklet monitor and moved to California. While under house arrest, Carl started to work with a therapist over Skype and joined a support group. Everyone that knew Carl all had very positive things to say about him. That was before the theft when he was like them, a fan. Carl will cite a loss of a job, too much pride when he was needing help as for some of the reasons for taking the items. He also acknowledged that that was an excuse for what he did. He said that he felt Star Wars and collecting over the years had took over his life, that it became more than just a hobby. After this event, Carl has put Star Wars, the toys, and collecting behind him and has tried to start over with a new life, knowing he could never heal the wounds he had called Zach, Philip. Stephen, and the community. The collector community also moved on and life got back to normal, but with every collector now having their guard up a little more, even around their friends. Stephen Sansweep had to issue a new rule for the Rancho Obi-Wan staff. No one would be left alone in the museum or warehouse ever again. Collecting is a great hobby and can bring joy into your life that never would have come without it and even bring you friends you never would have met. It also can bring trusted friends to betray you for selfish gains. And then we've gotten about seven items back from the dealer who bought many of these items directly from the thief and who has admitted to the thefts in emails and texts to me. And um, we've gotten, you know, 5% of the, of the stolen items back, a little less maybe, and we're hoping to get a lot more. Junk man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.